What's up, everybody out there in television land and the internet? Michael Hurdle here from the Michael Hurdle Production Studio, helping you render your imagination when it comes to video production and 3D animation on a small or no budget at all. Today, I'm going to show you three tips to get you started as a brand new video editor in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro CC, but if you're using a previous version, you can still follow along. This video will only cover the basics, so if you're new to Adobe Premiere Pro, then this video is definitely for you. Let's get this video started with tip number one. Before we create our first folder, I would highly recommend you have a separate hard drive for all your videos and project files. Having another hard drive can help take the strain off of your computer's main hard drive and help speed up your editing process. If you only have one hard drive in your computer that you're currently working with, don't sweat it. You can still use Premiere Pro, but I would highly consider getting another hard drive if you're going to do a lot of editing in Premiere. Here's a rule that I like to follow. I use my main hard drive only for the operating system, programs, system updates, and install plugins. I then have a second hard drive connected to my computer that I store all my videos, audio, and project related files, just so I don't have to go hunting around for missing media files later. I also have a third hard drive that I dedicate just for final renders and finished videos. I know this may be a little bit of an overkill, but I have a fourth hard drive that I dedicate only as a media cache drive for all my cached files. Because Premiere Pro is a non-linear editor, it needs a place to store cached files of your original media files. So enough about hard drives. Just in case you wanted to know, these are my computer's hardware specs that I'm using to edit in Premiere Pro. So inside of my production drive, I've created a folder called Premiere underscore projects. Inside that folder, I have a previous project that I was working on that I'm going to use as an example for this video. Inside this project folder, I've created subfolders for all audio and video files, including 4K drone footage and images. Now that my folders are named and organized, let's launch Adobe Premiere Pro and start a new project and begin to customize it. Moving us right along to tip number two. Now that Premiere Pro is up and running, let's create a new project. Don't forget to name your project. In location, I'm going to point to the project folder that I created earlier. Under video rendering and playback, if you have a video card that supports GPU acceleration, then choose that. You'll get better rendering performance. Everything else, I just basically leave as default. Under the Scratch Disks tab, I usually point to the same folder as a project, but in this case, since I already have a dedicated drive for that, I'll point everything to that drive. You'll get a better performance boost while editing. Press the OK button. When you first launch Adobe Premiere Pro, don't let the workspace intimidate you. Once you get yourself familiar with where everything is, you'll become more comfortable navigating the interface. Check out this workspace graph that I put together. I can do an entire lesson just on Premiere's workspace alone, but since this lesson only covers the basics, I'll focus on the areas that you'll most likely be using on the regular. So now that we got the boring parts out of the way, it's time to import some media files into this project and create a new sequence. Let's navigate to the project folder that I showed you earlier. I'll drag and drop all files that I'm going to use into this project. After all of your media files are successfully imported to Premiere, we have to choose what we want our main sequence to be. If you mostly shoot in 4K or 1080p, then I would suggest creating your sequence to match your main camera's recording format. Most of the videos that I upload to YouTube are in 1080p 60 frames per second or 23.976 frames per second. In this case, I shot with my Canon 80D in 23.976 frames per second, so I'm going to make this sequence 1080p 23.976 frames per second so they can match correctly. The easy way to do that is to right click on the video that you want to make the sequence from and click on new sequence from clip to create your main sequence. Or you can drag and drop the video from the source monitor directly to the timeline area to create your new sequence as well. Right click on the video in your sequence area and click on properties to verify that your settings are correct. Let's take a quick tour of the work area. You can highlight panels by clicking anywhere in the work area. 
This area is where you place all of your media files that you're going to edit. You have video tracks for all of your videos, titles, effects, and overlays. Here, you have audio tracks where you can place all of your sound effects, music, and voiceovers. In this area, you have your tools panel where you can cut, move, and select your media files. To the left, you have your project panel where you can access all of your media files stored on your computer or external device. Above that, you have the source monitor that you can view your media files that are inside the project panel. The program monitor is where you can view what you're editing in the timeline and sequence area. Over to the bottom right, you have the master audio meter where you can monitor your audio peaks and levels. Let's make our first cut. From the source monitor, I'm going to scrub where I want the video to start, then I'll hit the I key on the keyboard to create an endpoint. I'll then select where I want the video to end, then I'll hit the O key on the keyboard to create an out point. I'll then insert that video onto the sequence area where I can start creating my story on the timeline. I'm going to add some background music to make the video a little bit more appealing. Right click on the audio file and then go to audio gain to adjust the volume to your desired level. In some cases, if the audio track and video track are linked, right click on the track and click unlink to make both tracks independent from each other. To link or relink tracks, select both tracks, then right click and click link to connect them. If you wanted to add a title to your video, simply go to the title menu drop down and select new title default still. In the new title settings, I would recommend matching the width and height of your sequence so that you won't have any size issues later. You can then add whatever text you want in the title editor and then place the title on your video track. You can then drag the title to the length that you desire. You can do the exact same thing for the video track as well. You can dock and undock panels and place them in almost any configuration for your own custom look. If you're like me and got carried away with moving panels all over the place, you can always reset the workspace back to factory by going to Window, Workspace, and click the Reset to Save Layout to get back to the default layout. You can also save your custom workspace as a preset so that you don't have to waste time setting up every time you launch Premiere Pro. To save time, I have a finished sequence that I was working on to show you how Premiere Pro works with many different video formats and sizes. My main sequence is 1080p, but the drone footage is 4K. I also have some screen recordings for my iPad Air 2 mixed in there as well. If you have some videos that are larger than 1080p, you can always right click on that video and click the scale to frame size so that the 4K footage won't look stretched. You can add effects and transitions to your audio and video by going over to the project panel area and scrolling over to the effects tab. Simply drag and drop your effects to your audio or video and play it back to see the results. Last but not least, moving on to tip number three. Let's say you're done editing and you're ready to render your sequence into a movie. There's a few ways that you can do that. The fastest way is to press Ctrl M on your keyboard to bring up the export settings menu. or you can click export, then click on media to get to the export settings as well. Here, you get to see a preview window with a scrubbable head where you can preview your sequence one last time before you commit to the final render. You can also set your in and out points here as well. Over here to the top right, you have the export settings where you can export in just about any format depending on what plugins you have installed. If you want to use your current sequence, you can click the match sequence settings to render your movie or video with the same settings as your current sequence. If you're not too sure about which format you want to use, Premiere Pro has a ton of presets that you can choose from. Just in case you're not too sure on which settings you want to use, let's choose the YouTube 1080p HD preset from the drop down menu since I'm going to render this video for YouTube in 1080p. Below that, you can click the output name to rename or choose a location of where you want to save your finished video. You also have the option to render just the video or just the audio. The summary tab will reflect any changes you make before you render, so make sure to double check your summary before you make your final render. In the video tab below, you can manually enter your custom settings or set the bitrate higher or lower depending on what you need the final render to be. You can also enter custom settings for the audio as well. The estimated file size below shows how much hard drive space your video will take up after your render is complete. 
If you want to save time and render straight to social media or your Adobe Creative Cloud account, navigate over to the Publish tab where you can log in directly to your YouTube, Facebook, Twitter or Vimeo and upload straight to your account. If you have Adobe Media Encoder installed, you can click the Q button to open your sequence in Adobe Media Encoder. Opening your sequence in Media Encoder allows you to continue working on other projects in Premiere Pro while finished projects render in the background. But if you don't have Adobe Media Encoder installed, you can always hit the export button to start the render process. If everything was successful, after Premiere Pro completes rendering, you should have a completed video ready to show the world your new editing skills. So in conclusion, Adobe Premiere Pro is an industry standard when it comes to editing anything from a small vlog all the way to producing a blockbuster film. My name is Michael Hurdle from the Michael Hurdle Production Studio, helping you render your imagination when it comes to video production and 3D animation on a small or no budget at all. If you learned anything from this video, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Links to anything related to this video will be in the description below. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys the next time I upload a video.